by six. Yeah, keep watching. You don't know what may or may not be back there. Oh, my shirt. You like that? Bigfoot don't care about your stick figure family. I didn't design this. I bought it off somebody else on Etsy. I saw it and I thought, I just have to have that shirt. Uh, ironically, about two weeks ago, we were at one of my kids' events and there was a family there and they had the family sticker on the back of the minivan to include the dog and the cat. And I think a duck. So I just walked up and was like, hey, you guys like my shirt? They didn't really like it. <sighs> Look, faces in the trees. I made this one, I'm getting better. Getting better, the spoons are coming along too. But hey, not about this or this or anything uh we've we've got to have us a bigfoot sasquatch story today it's been a while since i've told one of those been talking about ghosts and spells and all this kind of stuff uh, but i'm kind of too worn out to to take the camera and go out here hiking in the mountains and looking for him her it or they because of what i did this morning very proud of what I did this morning and I've got the proof in the pudding for you. It's not on this video. I'm going to have to direct you to my wife's channel, Life with Dearly. Uh, we went to the track today because it was a speed workout day and I did four times 400 meters sprints and then four times 200 meters. Whew, you got to see it. Uh, I, I'm going to put her video of that. She got some footage of that. Beast, beast workout, like, like beast. We're talking... The, the pace was all between five minutes and five minutes and 20 second mile pace. So I just don't have anything left to go hiking to look for him or it or they. So I'm going to take the easy way out and uh, kind of read you a Bigfoot Sasquatch story instead. One you've never heard on here. Of course, who knows? I got to gotta keep my word. Got to keep my word. If I say I'm going to do it after I'm finished with the coffee, I need to get up there and do it, right? All right. So this is a story, it's from uh, Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Anthology 1, which is volumes 1 through 10, uh, three pound book, 800 pages, the largest single collection ever in, in English literature uh, put together stories of Bigfoot Sasquatch. Uh, the story I'm going to read you is one, it's a type of stuff that just can't be made up. You can't make it up. It was from a letter we got a couple of years ago. I think this one was written in 2020. Uh, this comes from volume six, I think. Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'll tell you, a lot of you baby boomers, I don't know how you survived the 80s. I mean, I was a kid in the 80s, I was a kid in the 70s. Uh, man, some of you people were nuts. And I'm gonna share one such story with you today. Uh, definitely clear the kids out of the room for this one. You don't want them hearing this one. Uh, there's some bad words. I'm gonna change them on the fly. Hopefully I catch them in time. Uh, this is weird. One of those things you just can't make up. Uh, and and it's, it's, again, I have a theory about why so many people who wanna see Bigfoot Sasquatch never do. It's because they go looking for him or her, or it, or them. Why did it just get really, really quiet, huh? <laughs> All right, with no further ado, or as my beautiful bride dearly, AKA Giggly Girl would say, with no further ado, can't even read you the title of this story. It's too graphic. I'll read you the story, but the title's just too graphic to be read. Dear Kevin, comes from a letter we received in 2020. It's a Bigfoot story. Hang in there, okay? Dear Kevin, first of all, I want to commend you for the work you do in a field few others would 
touched due to the surefire guarantee that they will be ridiculed, mocked, and discredited. You are a shining beacon in a world gone dark of real heroes. I commend you. One of them black flies coming around. You remember that story I came up here and told yesterday? I, I view horse flies through different eyes now. I thank God for you because I now have a safe place I can come to with my story. For years, the raw emotion inside me, raw emotions brought about by an experience I had years ago that have never lessened in rawness because until now, I've never been able to tell my tale. So until it was told, it was really raw, I think is what the guy was trying to say. You see, Kevin, I am an educated professional. I have a master's degree in business and I am very successful. I earn more than a quarter of a million dollars uh, a year as a private financial advisor. I work exclusively with high net worth individuals and as such, I only have to have a couple of dozen clients to make the money that I do. I do not work with anyone who is not willing to bring me at least $2 million. I state all this not to brag or to sound like the arrogant P word that many people in my line of work are, but to make it clear to you why I have never come forward with my story until now. I would no doubt be written off as insane and and who, especially among high net worth individuals, is going to invest their life savings with a man who is insane. I know I wouldn't. I might. Just, just saying. So here's the story. I haven't always been an upstanding member of my small community. Small community here being the key phrase, as you know how people talk so much in small towns. And once branded bad, you stay bad true story know about that sure i was always good at covering my tracks and one of the ways i did so was by being bad as it were outside of my community and this is where my profession came into play so well you see i wasn't always a private financial planner i used to work for a major brokerage firm and i wouldn't name which and i won't name which one but i followed your videos long enough to know that you used to do the same thing, and though you've never mentioned the large firm you used to work for, I have reason to believe it was the same one I worked for. The cultures sound too similar for the firms to be different. Okay. No way to confirm that, because I'm not going to mention it and give them any sort of free advertising on my channel here, which is bigger than theirs. <clears throat> just, just saying. Get out of here, you creepy-looking black fly. Anyway, once per quarter, our firm would hold a regional meeting. These were basically rah-rah sessions where our region's top producers would sit on a podium and tell all of us underlings how great they were and why they were so great. You used to work in the business, so I know that you know how it all went. They would make it sound like they were Billy Badass and like they basically told their clients to invest all their money with them the way they told them to invest it or else. And the clients would tremble in fear and not just open their checkbooks, but run out to the banks and the finance companies after leaving the office to borrow more money to invest with these Billy Badass brokers. Yeah, that's what it was like. This guy knows what he's talking about. It's like, I made them mortgage their house and bring me the money to put it in this stock because that's how much I believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, then you're a loser. Whatever. <sighs> Of course, Billy Badass always left a hole in their stories. Yeah, they did. A big one. The part about how their mothers were the sweetest little old ladies who everyone loved in the HR department down at the factory that employed 95% of the town's working populations. And how that dear little old lady, Mom, handed each new retiree her son's business card and said, Okay, now, now that you're retiring, you need to go see Jasper here and make sure that you do a 401k rollover, and you can't wait on this. Here, here as a matter of fact, I'm going to call and schedule your appointment. They leave out the part of how the retirees just couldn't believe that the little old lady in the HR department that they loved so much already was actually calling Jasper for them and setting up their appointment and why how good it felt and how easy it was just to walk into Jasper's office on their way home that day, their last day of their 35 years long career to plant and sign papers to allow Jasper such a fine outstanding young man any mother would be proud of. 
though they'd never learned that the little old lady back at HR actually was Jasper's mother, that whole conflict of interest thing, to transfer all 650000 of their 401k dollars into an IRA at Jasper's firm. And I'm glad to see that I'm not the only person on this planet that uses run-on sentences grammatically correctly written. Sounds like an oxymoron. I do it on purpose when I write. I'm like, pick that one apart, grammar Nazis, because grammatically it's correct. You can make it breathe more, but sometimes I just don't want to. Anyway, after a while, and after I'd garnered enough of a book of business of my own, like you, I'm a self-made man, I had no contacts in the real world, I said F them all and went independent. However, it was during the last regional meeting I attended while still with the big brokerage firm that I had my experience with a creature that is not supposed to exist. An experience that would reshape the rest of my life as I have not, and I repeat, I have not ventured back into the woods since. And this was back in 1986. Okay, so I've aged myself. But that's okay, because you've got to understand the time when this happened, because a lot of what was going on had everything to do with the time. And I know you're probably too young to remember some of the most unflattering parts of the era. I remember parachute pants, and clam diggers, and Kajimoto. So back in the mid-1980s, while you were probably watching a crappy movie remake of Flash Gordon, the old TV show I watched as a youth was way better. And Footloose. And listening to Culture Club and Cindy Lauper. How did you know? Those of us who were of age and who worked in professional circles were doing mountains of cocaine and throwing our car keys into salad bowls or hats at parties and then pulling out someone else's keys and then going home and procreating uh, with whomever the key, whoever owned the keys that we pulled out of the hat or the salad bowl. Gross. Yes, I hate to admit that this is how I spent much of my late 20s and early 30s, but alas, it is. The past is the past, and I cannot change that. And besides, I don't think I'd want to anyway. Some of my associates had some pretty hot wives. <sighs> hey, man, I'm just, I just, you know, put it in here as it was written. Okay, so we were at a place you might actually know, Smith Mountain Lake in the southern portion of Virginia. Yes, I live in Virginia too. I do know that place, and ironically, uh, I've been telling my beautiful bride dearly, a.k.a. Giggly Girl, we need to go there. But after the way this story ends, I'm not so sure I'm going to. Hang in there let, with me and see if you'd take your family there. We were partying balls that night after having our awards dinner where we saw the Jaspers of the firm given huge accolades for having done more than a million dollars in gross production, though they should have given the award to their mothers, whom they never seem to mention. After our first round of cocaine, someone started passing the salad bowl. I dropped my keys in, and realizing I was the last in line, I went ahead and pulled out a pair as well. I'll admit, I cheated. Our regional leader's wife was smoking hot. She was the typical trophy wife these guys would marry. And while she'd been walking around during dinner just hours earlier, she'd left her keychain conveniently hanging out of the side of her purse. To this day, I remember it. It looked like Prince's white guitar that he made famous in the movie Purple Rain. Oh, how I miss the 80s. Me too, brah. Me too. Well, I mean, at least the Prince and the Purple Rain part. I don't know, but these shenanigans you guys are doing at Smith Mountain Lake, that's just, that's... Anyway, having had the hots for this woman since I'd first seen her about two years earlier, I pulled her keys from the hat, and in pretty short order, she and I were walking through the woods surrounding the lake, hand in hand, looking for a secluded area. Most of the other folks at the party were simply going to each other's cabins, but for some reason, this woman, Judy was her name, wanted to do it outside. Looking back on it, I think it is because she loved not letting her husband know who she'd procreated with on these escapades. Of all the couples who were honest with each other during those times, I never remember any of them breaking up when we all grew up, which was quickened by the advent of the AIDS virus. But among those who were secretive, I would say that they all got divorced by the 1990s. 
I think Judy wanted to be able to hold secrets over her husband's head in order to make him both paranoid and jealous. Anyway, I'm happy to, to report two things. Judy and I got it on hot and heavy, and secondly, I didn't catch anything that I couldn't wash off. Again, when I look back on how I lived all those years ago, it amazes me that I'm still here. Thank God for good luck and three different rehabs, the third of which took. 23 years clean and sober now by the grace of God in a secret society I'm not allowed to mention in the press, radio, or film, wink, wink. Anyway, I'll be discreet in saving you the details of mine and Judy's quick escapade, but what I won't spare you is any detail in regard to the hideous creature we encountered on our way back to the party cabin. Kevin, I know that you like to think of these creatures as being kind and benevolent. I can tell you they are not. Not that the beast that Judy and I encountered harmed a single hair on our head because it didn't, but because of the look of death it wore on its face and the howl from hell that it emitted. Imagine, there you are, walking down a moonlit path in the forest, having had just procreated with the most beautiful woman you've ever known personally, actually fantasizing about ways to break her and her husband up. I actually was not married at the time so that you could spend half, happily ever after with her, and of course, removing the idea from your head that she would want to be shared with others at social get-togethers, when a beast standing nearly eight feet tall and weighing nearly 800 pounds just jumps out onto the trail in front of you, well, that's exactly what happened to us. Oh, sh crap, Judy yelled. I knew we were snorting some bad blow, Somehow at the regional meeting before this one, we'd gotten a hold of some bad sh crap. It had been laced with something, and a couple of the brokers and their wives ended up in the ER. It had turned out to be a good thing, actually, because while there, uh, they all tested positive for hepatitis C, and one was found to be carrying the AIDS virus. So, had we never gotten that bad blow, those who were sick but who did not know it might not have found out until it was too late. And by the way, the cheap butt broker who brought the bad blow was asked to leave the firm the following week and he went into private practice which he'd planned on doing anyway it didn't help him that his wife was she says some mean things about his wife nobody wanted his wife's keys so he gave him a bunch of bad blow and left the firm <laughs> silly stockbrokers anyway I assured Judy that we were not on a bad trip, even though we weren't doing acid, but you know what I mean. <laughs> not really. I assured her the thing in front of us was real, very real, and that we were probably going to die. The thing started walking toward us, slowly, sniffing as it did. <laughs> Trying to figure out what we were, though I have every reason to believe that it already knew. Sure, it may have never been seen by humans before, but I'm sure it had seen plenty of humans in its past. The damn thing got only feet away, away from us, looking at us like a midnight snack, working its sniffer like there was no tomorrow. To this day, I have no idea how I came up with the idea. I guess it just came to me, but I did it, and it worked. What am I talking about? Cocaina! I had a vial of cocaina in my pocket. I reached into my pocket with my left hand to pull it out and I took up Judy's left hand with my right. Thank the God of your choosing, as you would say, that she had long, luxurious nails. What are you doing, she asked. She was terrified of what was in front of us and of what I was doing and she was also frozen stiff due to her terror and I told her not to worry about it and to keep her mouth shut. Fortunately for both of us, she did. I spread a line of cocaina on Judy's pinky nail and I held her hand up toward the face of the monstrous beast that was now no less than an arm's length away from us. As I'd hoped would be the case, the creature sniffed the blow off of Judy's finger. It took a couple of steps back, sniffing violently as it did, and then came to a sudden stop. 
I can tell from experience that the buzz had just kicked in full bore. I'm sure the creature had a pretty healthy drug and alcohol free diet, which meant it had no tolerance to man made drugs. This thing was all jacked up on cocaina! And it started shaking, I mean its whole body, and it summarily let out a scream more terrifying than the scream it had emitted only a minute before. I literally wet my pants when the beast let out that second scream and Judy actually collapsed. And it was just then when I thought the creature was going to rip us both limb from limb that the creature began itching like crazy. I know that if you take too many prescription pills, you'll itch like that. Did I mention three rehabs? I think I did. So I just assumed the creature was having some sort of allergic reaction to the blow. Whatever the case was, it took off into the forest, disappearing as quickly and mysteriously as it had appeared. I heard it running for all it was worth until I could hear it running, couldn't hear it running anymore, and then I heard a super loud splash. I guess it jumped into the lake, hoping the water would cure it of its itch. Sadly, it had no idea the only true remedy for a bad trip and a hangover is time. I bent Judy over and coaxed her to consciousness by slapping her lightly and painlessly on the cheek. When she came to, she had absolutely no recollection of what had just happened. Actually, she had no recollection of us having procreated. And she told me that I was gross and how in God had she pulled my keys and for me to take her back to the party shack. Fantasy over. But the good news is, Judy never remembered our encounter with Bigfoot Sasquatch. At least not that she ever spoke of. I thought I just heard somebody, like, maybe even say my name. Did you say my name? No. Must have been another face in a tree. Wasn't me. On with the story. This is good because she was never able to pull me into having to talk about what had happened, which would surely have discredited me and I'm sure it would have ruined my life. People have had their lives ruined by talking about seeing these things. JC, Kevin, he used the Lord's name in vain there. I'm not gonna do that here or anywhere. Just personal thing I don't do. It has been so many years that I've held this story inside of me and I have wanted so badly to share it with someone and finally thank God for you because you are that someone. I know that a-holes who have no life and who live in their mother's basements give you ever-loving hell in the comments section on your YouTube channel due to the videos you make. But listen, they are going to do that no matter what type of videos you make. Those people are just miserable and hate their lives. You could go back to making those boring ass videos about green beans and corn and you'll still have them. So please, please, pretty please, whatever you do, do not stop making your Bigfoot Sasquatch videos. I don't know if this goes as far as some sort of government cover up, but I do know that these creatures are out there and the masses need to be informed. So please keep being that shining beacon in the dark for those of us who you are so bravely leading to your light. Sincerely yours, P.T. Somewhere in Southwestern Virginia. The end. There you have it, folks. If you like that, there's about 79 more tales approximately in this 800-page long, three-pound behemoth of a collection of Bigfoot Sasquatch stories. Uh, it's available on our Etsy store, the link is in the description box below. By the way, uh, Miss Dearly has been asking me to get the word out, so I'm going to do it here again. She's taking time off this summer from her food business she does. So if you want more lumpy or peanuts, or if you haven't tried them yet, get them in May. As of this recording, it's May 2000. Hey, today, listen, it's May the 4th. Be with you, 2022. Ha, I finally had not, seriously, look at that. See that, 504? 
May the fourth be with you. I would say that's how Big Mike would say it, but I don't want him beating me up on an airplane. Go get my wife's lumpia peanuts and pick one of these up while you're there. Oh, go watch that video at the end of this one from my wife's channel. You want to see me, this beast, in training? Check it out. And now that I've drank all my coffee, why not? But I'm not going into the forest alone after this creepy story I just read. Who knows what the heck's out here? Potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch. Potentially a bunch of baby booming yuppies high on cocaine doing weird things with people's car keys. So I'm taking this one with me. It's protection. See you next time for more. Yes, we're really going. Come on.